Police are trying to piece together what led up to a shootout on the city's northwest side. Dr. Katrina Weber has the latest. A fire captain honored by other first responders. We have a look at the processional that took place this morning. And we now have a tropical storm out in the Atlantic. We've got the latest on the tropics coming up. Live from KZ12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, have you seen this girl? Bear County Sheriff's deputies are looking for her. BCSO says 17 year old Isabel Ann Serta was last seen on August 13th at a home in the 9800 block of Conmara Bend. That's on the in the far northwest Bear County area. She's approximately five foot two inches tall, weighs around 118 pounds and has brown hair and black rather brown eyes and black hair. Anyone with information on Isabel's whereabouts is being asked to contact the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The phone number is 210-335-6000, or you can email missingpersons at bear.org. It seems that two men had the same idea for ending a dispute at a West Side apartment complex. San Antonio police say they shot each other. It happened in the home of one of the men on Callahan Road near Calabria. And as Katrina Weber tells us, police say the other man was his neighbor. An apartment complex that two men called home became a crime scene to police. They say because of those men. Officers told us they shot each other. While they're still sorting out what went wrong in the 1100 block of Callahan, they believe a man in his 30s went to the second floor apartment and got into it with the man who lives here around 530 this morning. Police say both pulled out guns. They found the visitor back at his own home. Both he and the other man who's in his 20s were taken to a hospital. For several months, there has been open gang uh, presence. Uh, weapons have been flashed. This neighbor who didn't want to show his face says he saw this kind of trouble brewing in and around this building. He says it has left him and others feeling afraid and trapped in their own homes. It's one of the worst things about an apartment complex with a, a lot of children and they can't come out and have fun. Police here at the scene were able to back up at least some of what the neighbors say that they have been called here before. In the words of one investigator, this is a busy apartment complex. Police figures make the case even more. Hundreds of calls during the past six months for things like disturbances, people with weapons, and multiple reports of gunshots. In this month alone, officers were called here nearly 100 times. I hope people can stand up against this and the police will help us. He hopes this latest call to police will also act as a wake-up call. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the woman whose children discovered her dead at their home. We first brought you the story as late breaking news on the news at noon yesterday. Police say 27 year old Cora Nickel was found by her young children ages five and eight inside her northwest side home on Maverick Draw yesterday afternoon. Officers tell us one of her two children then sent a text over to the grandmother letting her know that something was wrong. Police suspect foul play in the death and say Nichols' body showed signs of significant trauma. Honoring a hero. This was the scene this morning as the city of Converse and Bear County came together for a procession for Captain Bryant Anderson. He recently lost his battle with COVID-19. The procession started at Santa Rosa Northwest Hospital and ended at Heritage Oaks Mortuary on W.W. White Road. First responders and 20 marked emergency vehicles took part in the ceremony. Anderson was a 16 year veteran with the Converse Fire Department. The Converse Police Chief says the funeral for Captain Anderson may not take place for another two more weeks. Meanwhile, across Bear County, the coronavirus pandemic claiming 21 more lives. This is according to the latest report from Metro Health that said our seven day average of new cases is still going down. Health officials say that those deaths occurred between May 24th and Monday. There were also 191 new cases reported yesterday, which drops our seven day average to 138 per day. More than a thousand families got the chance to pick up some free food this morning. Health care, primary care physicians and associates, that's Health Texas primary care physicians and associates, joined food bank volunteers this morning. The food bank's been doing these big food distributions since the pandemic began because they saw a spike in need. 
San Antonio's food bank president and CEO, Eric Kugler, says the increased need for food will stay this way for at least a while. I mean, you see behind me, it's a long line, and we do these distributions about 20 times a week and all throughout South Texas where the San Antonio Food Bank provides food. And, um, you know, until we get past this, this crisis, I think we're going to continue to see this demand uh, until the economy is strengthened, until people are able to get the hours, the jobs, the opportunities. This latest major food distribution took place at NISD's Gustafson Stadium. Four female pilots on a mission to mark a special anniversary. This week was the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. It gave women the right to vote. So, women pilots hit the skies for a flyover this morning. They started on the south side at Stinson Airport, which of course was founded by trailblazers Catherine and Marjorie Stinson, both women. Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran took a moment to, at this event to encourage people to get out and vote. The ratification of the 19th Amendment was uh, not for all women. Um, it was for women, but not women of color. So that had to fight. We had to keep fighting for all women to be included in that. But we know that women make a difference. And I think it's also a significant because we're a majority female council in the city of San Antonio. And we have continued to, we want to make sure that people realize the fight that it took to get our right to vote and not squander it because we have to use it. The pilots flew over several landmarks, including Providence High School and the University of the Incarnate Word. Social distancing got you down? Shake it off with a free treat. In fact, we have several what freebies you can score still ahead. The Houston Astros don't need to steal signs to put together a winning streak, apparently. Larry Mayer with that coming up in sports. Fiesta may have been canceled, but Miss Fiesta 2020 found a way to still have fun and support a great cause. Coming up after the break, the surprise she helped put together for 50 lucky girls. Science, math, and art, just three of the academic subjects that make up what's called the STEAM field. But they're not always on everyone's favorites. Miss Fiesta San Antonio uh, 2020, Callista Burns, she wants to help change that by letting young girls who are interested and incited, excited to learn about STEAM subjects do so. So Burns was part of a special surprise given to 50 lucky girls. Alicia Barrera explains how the effort ties in with Miss Fiesta's own passions. Good afternoon. Well, Miss Fiesta teamed up with Vandalero Energy to create these gem steam activity kits, which are a box full of fun materials in order to make these DIY experiments. And this idea came about during the summer. Miss Fiesta 2020, Callista Burns, scheduled 50 separate visits to reach out to the middle school girls that missed out on the Girls in Engineering, Math and Science, or GEM summer camp after it was canceled due to the pandemic. Callista says she was inspired by Valero's content on their website, fueledby.com. That site celebrates activities that fuel creativity and excitement, including for sports, arts, and of course for STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. I went on Valero's website, picked three of their STEAM activities that I thought our girls would enjoy most, and purchased all the materials and supplies and the boxes, of course, um, that the girls would need to do these experiments at home. Um, so I put them all together at my house. My living room kind of looked like a Amazon warehouse with so many boxes, but um, it was a lot of fun and I, I really enjoyed delivering them to all the girls and seeing their smiling faces. Miss Fiesta says she's really thankful for Valero Energy support and contribution in making these activity kits possible for the girls. And she hopes that through this activity, girls are inspired to research more careers or even hobbies in STEAM. As Miss Calista Burns, Miss Fiesta 2020 herself, is studying to become a math educator. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Outside, 93 degrees already. Hot, humid, bleh, and some stuff going on in the Gulf. Well, at least there's something to talk about.
Yeah, it's getting busy out there in the tropics. That's for sure. We've got two systems, two systems that will likely make it into the Gulf of Mexico. There's still a lot of questions you know, as to whether or not that will affect us. We're going to dig into that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Meantime, aquifer not in a good spot going down about half a foot, 654.7 uh, today's level and the pollen count. We have a lot there, but nothing that uh, just jumps off the page. Mold is down from where it was yesterday, 510 ragweed following pigweed all in today's pollen count. We'll have more on that tropical situation coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. the most important meal of the day. And now it's the cheapest thing at IHOP. The breakfast chain is giving out free pancakes to people who sign up for their email list. And if pancakes aren't your thing, you can also grab something else at a discount. Get 20% off your first online order. Just use the code IHOPIN20. With many of us social distancing, shaking hands may be out of the question. So what about a shake for each hand? Shake Shack is making that happen. If you order a shake through Uber Eats, you can get one free for a limited time. Download the Uber Eats app to get yours. Nothing says I love you like a bunch of cookies. This sweet freebie is just for military families. Deployed soldiers can connect with their loved ones via an augmented reality video gift message and a dozen free cookies. This deal comes courtesy of Tiff's Treats and Soldiers Angels. If you want to sign up, we've got all the info right now for you on KSAT.com. More and more theaters are starting to welcome back movie lovers. And to entice customers, Santikos is offering free movie tickets. To get yours, you have to sign up for the Santikos Rewards Program. It does cost $8 to join. We are keeping an eye outside because what's happening right now is nothing compared to what could happen in the Gulf. It's true. Uh, yes, it, it, it is going to get active, it, but there's still a lot of questions as to what's what's going to happen, how these storms will move, what their exact path will be. And I, I think there could be some effects on us. But right now it's looking like maybe a lot of the rain could be off to our east. We'll see. We'll have more on that in just a second. First, let's talk about the heat, though, guys, because that's the other big story, right? It's been hot for so long. 100.7 our average height temperature here uh, in San Antonio in the month of August. Every day has been above average. We've had several records. Basically, we've been right around 100 every day. 14 days at 100 or above. Every other day has been 98 or above. So those other days where we want it, we weren't at 100. We've been at 98 or 99. Uh, it's just been a really hot month, and it looks like it'll continue today. Our high pressure is centered over Arizona still. So we've got northerly flow. We're also on the backside of this area of low pressure here. So everything's coming north to south. Every now and then we can get these little disturbances that round the bend and come down through South Texas. We saw that yesterday. Some showers and storms erupted uh, west of San Antonio. I think we could see a few more today, but maybe even more so tomorrow as we get another little disturbance rolling through. That being said, it's still just a 20% chance of rain. A lot of uh, uncertainty there too, but I think there will be some showers and storms tomorrow. We're already getting a few today east of Howitzville. Some lightning strikes starting to show up. These will mainly stay over towards the Houston area, but uh, can't rule out a, a, an isolated shower or storm this afternoon. And computer models show that. So places like Gonzales, uh, Quero, Victoria, Beeville, areas we'll have to watch uh, later today. Now let's go into Saturday. And most of Saturday is going to be OK, but as we get into the afternoon, it looks like we do have a piece of energy coming through and this particular model does bring some showers and storms in right now. Again, a 20 percent chance of rain for San Antonio and all of South Texas as we get into tomorrow outside right now. 93 degrees. Dew point is at 65. That number is a little bit higher than it was yesterday. So we're dealing with a heat index of 95 south southwesterly winds at about eight. Everybody's in the 90s at this point. 93 comfort 91 Boulevard, 95 in New Braunfels. 94 Cotua, 93 in Carrizo Springs. And yet again, we'll see more triple digits on the map today. Two points are a little bit higher, as I mentioned. So, yeah, we got to deal with a heat index today uh, more so than we have last couple days. So it'll feel a little bit warmer. And we'll tack on a degree here in San Antonio. Same in New Braunfels, 100 in Gonzales, but it'll feel like 102. Okay, let's talk about the tropics now. We've got our two systems, as we pointed out earlier. One is Tropical Storm Laura, which is uh, well off to the east. 
uh, out in the Atlantic, uh, starting to make its way into the Caribbean, though. And then we've got Tropical Depression 14. This is the one we really need to watch. Right now, winds are at 35 miles per hour. It's got a nice center of circulation here, but still not terribly well developed. It'll make its way into the Gulf as we get into next week. And then you got Laura here with uh, winds at 45 miles per hour. It's moving west at 18 miles per hour. Here are the latest tracks from the Hurricane Center. And I, you know, what's interesting about this is the fact that we've got two systems, potentially two hurricanes in the Gulf, which uh, looks like by looking at the records, this has never happened. So this is on brand for 2020, I'd say. But uh, we're expecting the systems to both be in the Gulf by early next week. This one potentially working its way up into Texas or Louisiana. But notice western side of this cone. And remember, it can be anywhere inside this cone is all the way down south towards Corpus Christi. So there is still a chance we could feel some impacts from this. It's still too early to tell. And then this system will work its way towards the Gulf Coast, potentially Florida, Mississippi, Alabama. So a lot going on here, and this will have a huge impact on our forecast next week. We have put some rain chances in by the middle part of early and middle part of next week. Forecast for today up around 100, about a 10% chance of rain. So not a great chance. And then as we get into tomorrow, 20% chance, 98. 98 Sunday. 98 Monday. We'll put those rain chances in Monday and Tuesday, depending on how these systems evolve. We'll keep you posted over the weekend on social media, online, on your app, you name it. We'll, we've got you covered, guys. Could be interesting. Yes. Two systems, one right after another. All right, congratulations to Larry. He called it yesterday. You said the best chance they had was to get the 11th pick and they got the 11th pick. What do they say? A blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and again, right? I mean, so. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Just got lucky there, David. Yes, the Spurs draft lottery. The balls didn't bounce their way to move into the top 10, but they did get the 11th pick. More on that. Plus, Damian Lillard dislocated a finger. Oh, that looks painful. Coming up. We didn't have to see that. Picking 11th is the San Antonio Spurs. All right, no so lottery ball luck this time Spurs. for Peter J. Holt and the Spurs in Big Board Sports. The Spurs didn't have the greatest of odds last night in the 2020 NBA Draft Lottery, entering with a 2% chance of winning the top pick. Sacramento, New Orleans, and Memphis all had worse odds than the Spurs, but 10 teams had better. The Spurs' best shot was 11th at some 77%, and that's where they landed, 11th overall. The Spurs were represented by SSNE Chairman Peter J. Holt, who was live from inside the AT&T Center during a socially distanced draft a lottery. So the Spurs own the 11th overall pick in the 2020 draft. They could also trade up or down. You just never know. And in the second round, the Spurs have the 41st pick. The 2020 NBA draft is scheduled for Friday, October 16th. And here's the top 10. Minnesota tied for the best odds, won the right to draft number one in October. Golden State is two, Charlotte three, Chicago four, Cleveland five. Atlanta, Detroit, New York, Washington, and the Phoenix Suns close out at the top 10. Game two between the Trailblazers and the Lakers was certainly much different than game one. The Lakers dominated from the tip. LeBron James struggled making just four of 10 shots for 10 points. The fewest points he scored in a win in his 241 career playoff games. So Lakers big man Anthony Davis took over with a game high 31 points and 11 rebounds. Los Angeles led by as many as 33 in LA rolls 111 to 88. During post game, LeBron compared Davis to a mythical creature. I've had some great teammates in my career. Um, AD is one of those unicorns, um, and he does things that some of my other great teammates are not capable of doing. You know, to be able to go out and, uh, you know, orchestrate the offense, orchestrate the tempo, and get it to the hot man, get it to AD, um, and, and let us run our offense through him um, is a luxury for myself, it's a luxury for our team. David, here comes that picture again. Blazers point guard Damian Lillard suffered a dislocated finger on his left non-shooting hand in the third quarter and had to leave the game for good. X-rays were negative. He scored 18 points and then talked about the finger after the game. It's just sore. Um, you know, a little bit tender, just to the touch. And um, dislocated it, so, you know, it's just sore, a little bit swollen. and. Uh, uncomfortable. Off the zero, and they're given that. What's your sense of game three? What do you mean? As far as playing, 
Well, I'm playing. He's playing. You know he will. Game three is tomorrow night, 730 here on KSAT 12. Check out the rest of yesterday's action. The Heat beat the Pacers to go up two games to none. The Rockets lead the Thunder to nothing after winning 111-98. The Bucks bounced back in game two to even that series at one all. And the Lakers, of course, hammered the Blazers. Red hot Astros at the Rockies. Houston's bats exploding at Denver. Top five, two on for Abraham Toro, and he goes big fly into the Astros bullpen. Three run shot measuring at 438 feet. The bullpen loving it. It's the second of the season, and the Astros are rolling 10 to three, and Houston wins 10 to eight, sweeping the Rockies. They've won eight straight, and the Texas Rangers fought to the Padres eight to seven in 10 innings, their fifth loss in a row. Thanks for that lasting image. You are welcome. And you had to call his attention to it. Absolutely. Just... He's all squeamish over there. I saw it. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>《More Trouble on Fort Hood》Another Soldier Now Missing. The U.S. Army says they're looking for 23 year old Sergeant Elder Fernandez. The 1st Cavalry Division says that Sergeant Fernandez has not been heard from since Monday. Family members reported him missing on Wednesday. They told police that Fernandez's staff sergeant was the last person to see him when he dropped Fernandez off at home on Monday night. Fort Hood has come under scrutiny recently after at least eight soldiers died or were found dead since the start of the year. Four people still missing. At least one person has serious burns after an explosion at a refinery. It happened this morning. The Corpus Christi mayor says a propane pipeline was hit by an oil barge and that led to the blast. This is a live look of that refinery. You can see some flames are still shooting up. They're still putting some water on it and whatever they can do to try to get that thing we're told a total of six people were taken to the hospital. We are following the latest developments as well involving Steve Bannon's indictment. This after he was charged with defrauding donors to a private effort to build part of the wall bordering Mexico. Now the former campaign chairman and chief strategist is out on a multi-million dollar bond. ABC's Rita Roy shares the details following Bannon's first court appearance in Manhattan. Build that wall. Build that wall. With a group called We Build the Wall, Steve Bannon and several others made big promises to hundreds of thousands of people across the country who donated $25 million, thinking it would assist President Trump's effort to build a wall on the Mexican border. But federal prosecutors allege Bannon, President Trump's former chief White House strategist, who helped run Trump's 2016 campaign, and also three other individuals, misappropriated some of those funds. Bannon is accused of diverting hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for his own expenses. You see him leaving a Manhattan courthouse Thursday after pleading not guilty to charges of money laundering and fraud. He was arrested while aboard this $28 million luxury yacht owned by an exiled Chinese billionaire off the coast of Connecticut. Bannon and those three other defendants accused of even offering donors a brick on the wall with their names on it. You're not going to last forever, but your brick will. The group was founded by Brian Colfage, an Air Force vet who lost three limbs in Iraq. In fundraising pitches, he was adamant all proceeds would only fund the cause. 100% of your money goes towards the wall. Pocket, I'm taking zero dollars of the salary. But the DOJ indictment alleges he also used hundreds of thousands of dollars for his own benefit, including home renovations, payments toward a boat, a luxury SUV, a golf cart, jewelry, cosmetic surgery, personal tax payments, and credit card debt. President Trump now distancing himself from Bannon, who he fired three years ago, claiming he never liked the private Build the Wall campaign. I feel very badly. I haven't been dealing with him for a long period of time. When I read about it, I didn't like it. I said, this is for government. This isn't for private people. And it sounded to me like showboating. Bannon has called the charges against him a fiasco. He was released on $5 million bail, and his travel is restricted to the New York and Washington, D.C. areas. He's also not allowed to travel on private jets or yachts. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The head of the U.S. Postal Service appeared in a virtual hearing with members of the Senate Gover Governmental Affairs Committee. Postmaster General Luis DeJoy 
discussing the Postal Service's finances and operations as they pertain to the upcoming election during the COVID-19 pandemic. Joy defended his actions over the past 67 days as the leader of the Postal Service. One thing he pointed out was that the USPS was to likely lose billions of dollars this year if Congress doesn't help. This year, the Postal Service will likely report a loss of more than $9 billion. Without DeJoy said that Congress needs to address retirement payments within the Postal Service, saying the agency can't afford the payments. He also assured people that all election mail will be delivered securely and on time. Former Vice President Joe Biden formally accepted the Democratic presidential nomination last night. During his speech, Biden shared how he would protect America. He talked about his economic plans and he bashed President Donald Trump's coronavirus response. He said the president, quote, failed in his most basic duty to the nation. He's failed to protect America and my fellow Americans. That is unforgivable, end quote. The current president has cloaked American darkness for much too long. Too much anger, too much fear, too much division. Here and now, I give you my word. If you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I'll be an ally of the light, not the darkness. At the same time that was happening, President Trump attacked Biden during a speech in Pennsylvania on Thursday and continued to do so throughout the final night of the convention. That, that final night of the convention also saw former presidential hopefuls Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Michael Bloomberg and others delivering separate speeches focusing on human and economic consequences of the pandemic. Vladimir Putin's biggest critic and opposition leader Alexei Navalny is still in a coma after allegedly being poisoned. Family and allies of the 44-year-old opposition leader are fighting to get him transferred to a German clinic, but Russian doctors treating Navalny are refusing to give authorization for the transfer because they say the politician is too unstable. His supporters believe something was put in his tea at the airport and the suspected poisoning was engineered by the Kremlin. And actress Lori Laughlin's husband, Massimo Giannulli, has been sentenced to five months in jail and fined $250,000 for paying a half a million dollars in bribes to get his two daughters admitted to the University of Southern California as rowing recruits. The fashion designer also has to perform 250 hours of community service. That sentence was handed down this morning. Laughlin is set to be sentenced sometime this afternoon. Both have agreed to the terms after continuing to claim their innocence. The couple finally reversed course and back in May and decided to plead guilty to conspiracy charges. We want to take a look outside on this Friday. Start of the weekend, not a cloud in the sky, but hope for next week. It's going to be a little bit cooler. Yeah, maybe we'll get down into the upper 90s, which at this point would be a nice change. There are some rain chances, too, I think, next week as we get a little more moisture in place today. We haven't seen much in the radar. A couple showers this morning, and we're seeing a couple showers off to the east of San Antonio this afternoon. We'll zoom in a little bit closer here, and you can see some of that action between here and Houston. I think if we're going to see some showers and storms today, that's probably where it's going to be, where you see some of these clouds trying to develop around Gonzales. We can see some pop-up uh, downpours there. Otherwise, here around San Antonio, generally quiet. We can't completely roll out a shower or storm, though. A little better chance as we get into tomorrow. Temperatures are warm, about where they have been at this time. Uh, over the last couple days, we've been sitting at 93 around noontime. Uh, 93 Holotus, 90 Bernie Stage, 95 Comfort. With that lack of cloud cover, it, there's a good chance we're getting up to 100, if not a little bit above. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. There is that outside chance of a shower. And again, we have some more chances down the line. And of course, the tropics becoming more and more interesting. We're going to have an update there coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thanks. A couple of Texans now reunited in Houston, which makes things really fun. Larry Mears with that coming up at sports. Streaming right now on the KSAT TV app, COVID-19 survivors are making a plea to other survivors, hoping to get more people to donate plasma. And new content on other platforms takes you back in time to watch a love story unfold and deep into outer space as well to see if the truth really is out there. With a look at some of your streaming options, here's Erica Hernandez. 
It's a silver lining for COVID-19 survivors, the ability to help others fight the virus through convalescent plasma donations. Streaming now, two donors share their stories in extended interviews on the KSAT TV app. Here for one of our own KSAT producers. This is the perfect opportunity to give back to the community in a, in a moment where everybody needs help. You know, it's not only me or it's not only my neighbor. Everyone in the, in the world needs help. Plus a local whose experience has come full circle. And it's not political, it's not racial, it doesn't discriminate against anybody. This plasma will save anybody's life out there. John has a very special mission in life. He is trying to contact aliens. New on Netflix, the truth is out there and John Shepard is hoping to find it through music. For three decades, he has been beaming music to the furthest corners of the universe, hoping to contact aliens. This short doc, John was trying to contact aliens, follows his journey. How well do you know your parents? <laughs> it's easy to forget your parents were once young, crazy things. Everything I thought I knew turned out to be wrong. critically acclaimed stage show comes to the silver screen and now you can stream it at home. The movie features popular music from New Zealand. Watch the bittersweet love story Daffodils on Hulu. Where are we? Access granted. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't think your mom is just a regular mom. Quit touching stuff. Let's go. Oh, what's this button do? Predator mode engaged. <laughs> A sleepover turns into an adventure in this Netflix original movie. A group of kids set out on a mission to save their parents after they were kidnapped by a crew of international thieves. The action comedy is streaming now. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, pretty standard day today, pretty standard weekend, hot and humid. But next week, we might have some changes with those storms in the Gulf. We'll be right back. Sir, I have a question for you. Maybe it's for him, but maybe you can ask him too. What's the odds? What are the odds of these two storms like coming together, like bumping into each other? We asked that question yesterday of Justin. He said it's extremely rare, uh, rare for that to happen. But yeah, have it's, they changed it's zero. today? Yeah. Still zero today? It's zero. Yeah, you, well, it's not, they're going to be at different times. Correct. And you would never see them come together into a superstorm. It just doesn't happen. It would end up one would rotate around the other. It gets complicated. And what, what would you call it if that did happen? The Hashi? Oh, the, uh, Fuji, Fujimoto. Fujimoto. I was going to say Hashimoto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but we actually don't even think that may happen. I think they're going to be too far apart. Time is just a little bit off. But it is fascinating that we're going to have both of these in the Gulf at the oh, same yeah. time. Uh, it's, it's rare. In fact, uh, it doesn't look like we've had that even happen in history. You have two hurricanes in the Gulf at once. It's possible. So let's jump into it and show you where these systems are right now. Uh, we've got our tropical depression number 14, which is uh, down there near Honduras. Looks okay on the satellite picture right now. Winds are at 35 miles per hour, and it's moving northwest at about 14. It's near lands. So that may be causing it to, to weaken just a little bit, but it should uh, stay out over open water tomorrow, strengthen some. Then it's got to cross the Yucatan, which will weaken it some, and then eventually it'll move back into the Gulf where it is expected to strengthen again. Uh, meantime, we have Tropical Storm Laura out in the Atlantic, uh, just to the east of the islands. Winds are at 45 miles per hour with this system, and it's moving west at about 18 miles per hour. Uh, really, it's Tropical Depression 14 that we got to worry more about, I think, here in Texas. But as I mentioned, both of these systems are expected to work towards the Gulf. This is Monday morning. Potentially have a hurricane on our hands there in the Gulf, and then uh, Laura would be a tropical storm. Then as we move towards, say, Tuesday, that's when we could get some uh, a potential landfall here. Now, it looks like Laura will be a little bit behind uh, what's going on with this uh, potentially tropical storm, Marco, as it uh, moves towards Texas or Louisiana. But I'll point out that the cone of uncertainty here is still very huge. There's still a lot of uncertainty. The models are not handling this great so far. Uh, and it does look like it could be as far west as Corpus Christi, as far east as, say, uh, New Orleans. So there's still a range here that we've got to watch. As far as impacts for us, if it takes more of an easterly track, we're going to stay on the dry side of things. and We probably won't see much out of it. If it takes more of a westerly track, we could get some rain 
and some impacts. So these are all things to watch going forward. And we just won't have a lot of answers for you probably until we get into the weekend and we'll start to refine the forecast a little bit better. But we have added some rain chances into the forecast for next week to account for that. Across Texas right now, you'll notice some showers. We have those uh, down along the coast in between here and Houston. Some thunderstorms, in fact, showing up. Most of these aren't moving much, and if they are, they're moving off to the east. But what I am noticing is some cumulus clouds trying to develop here. And these could bubble up into something a little bit later this afternoon. So we'll leave some rain chances in the forecast. And our computer model uh, does show that possibility there through 6 o'clock. Uh, maybe a, a storm or two, about a 10% rain chance for us here in San Antonio. And then tomorrow, maybe a little stronger disturbance rolling through, and the model's been pretty consistent on developing at least some thunderstorm activity tomorrow afternoon. So about a 20% chance of rain on your Saturday. Shouldn't interrupt your plans too much, but just be aware there, there is that chance there. 93 degrees right now. Dew point is at 65. A little bit of a heat index out there. 92 Tarpley, 94 in Bandera. 95 Carrizo Springs, 92 right now in Del Rio. Dew points are higher than they were yesterday in the mid-60s. Uh, so it is a little muggy out there. And again, there is a heat index to contend with. 101 is what it feels like in Gonzales. You can tack on a couple of degrees here for the feels like temperature in San Antonio through the afternoon. Our forecast calls for a high right around 100. And then we'll slip back down into the 80s tonight. Just about a 10% chance of rain, 20% chance tomorrow. We stay in the upper 90s and then maybe a bit more cloud cover Monday and Tuesday, depending on what happens in the tropics. Right now, about a 30% chance of rain. Uh, across our eastern counties on Tuesday. Temperatures stay warm, but if we had some more cloud cover potentially Tuesday, maybe that temperature comes down a little bit. Still a lot of unknowns there uh, as we get into next week, guys. It's been a while since we got temperatures that low. Yes. We'll be back. Larry Ramirez is coming back with some Cowboys. Definitely the camaraderie, the, the guys, the laughs, the little jokes, um, just being around guys and, you know, things that um, just locker room fun. That's what Dallas Cowboys defensive end Alden Smith says he missed the most during his nearly five years away from football and big board sports. Defensive end Alden Smith is excited to be a member of the Dallas Cowboys and he's thrilled to be back in the NFL. He last played in September of 2015 with the Raiders and missed the last four seasons due to violating the NFL's substance abuse and personal conduct policies. He's back and holding his own against all pro left tackle Tyron Smith. I enjoy going against Tyron. Um, I believe Tyron's one of the, the better tackles in our league, if not the best. And um, going against him every day gives me a good look. And um, if anything, you know, we spoke about Russ, but it helps me um, just get better every day. And um, it'll help me going into every game that we play. Tyron was forced to leave practice early yesterday with a tweaked hamstring. He was replaced by Wyatt Miller and Steel High School's very own Terrence Steele, an undrafted rookie from Texas Tech. And one more note, right tackle Lyle Collins was involved in a minor car accident yesterday. He missed practice, but is with the team. Competition at tight end is heating up for the Houston Texans where Darren Fells, Jordan Atkins, Jordan Thomas, and Kaheli Waring are vying for playing time. Fells, now in his second season with the Texans, became Deshaun Watson's go-to guy in the red zone last season with seven touchdown catches, a team record at that position. Fells, now in his seventh season, is being reunited with former Arizona running back David Johnson. It's been a lot of fun because we played in Arizona for four years, so being able to rekindle our our little uh, relationship we had in Arizona and now back here in Houston, um, it's been a lot of fun uh, catching up. And now he has two kids, I have two kids, so we're trying to, obviously at times we can't really get together as much as we want to, but we're just relating to each other in that uh, aspect and then just helping out with the offense as much as I can. Um, you know, he's a huge threat both in the pass game and run game. So it's someone we can really use. After playing for three teams in three seasons, Fell said signing a two-year extension in March with the Texans was huge for him. Turning to USL Championship play, San Antonio FC defeated OKC Energy FC 4-0 at home Wednesday to remain unbeaten in eight matches this season. They lead Group D with 18 points. San Antonio native Matthew Cardoni recorded his second clean sheet of the season and 16th overall for the club, tying the club record for most all-time shutouts. 
Matt is a, he's a great keeper. Uh, he's one of the better keepers in the USL. So, uh, you know, we, we were confident when he stepped in, he was going to do the job, and he has been. It's BC. The AFC has five shutouts this season. They'll return to USL Championship action Saturday, August 22nd at 8 p.m., hosting FC Tulsa at Toyota Field. Guys. His first goal. All right, Larry, Larry, thank you very much. You notice he was like wandering over there near the near the food. Larry, back this way. There's yeah. food. There's a ton of food. A ton of food on the show today. And some celebrities. <laughs> Well, it's always celebrities because Mike and Fiona are on SA Live. <laughs> oh. Or real celebrities, but, but thank you anyway. <laughs> well, you can follow your nose to the smell over there. Yes, a new type of pizza with a Mexican twist. We're getting a taste of the new flavors coming out of an iconic Mexican restaurant. I can't wait to taste it. And getting tired of the same old beef? Hey, we're going to help you spice up, spice it up with four tips for better burgers. How to make it healthy without losing flavor. Plus, a WWE wrestling star finds a new home in South Texas on this Feel Good Friday. We learn more about him. Like, I didn't know he has to take in over 9,000 calories a day to stay above his goal weight. I'm so jealous. <laughs> that was like Michael Phelps swimming, you know, something like that. And, hey, we want to know who your celebrity lookalike is or who you think we look alike. <laughs> <laughs> what a laugh. Well, I mean, oh my gosh, now I'm worried. Share your comments <laughs> on social media and you just might see them on TV. <laughs> hmm. Brand new essay live is just a couple of minutes away. Stick around.